Fancy meeting you here in this little old place. I'm Tish, and this is Echo Echo. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> How's everybody going? I'm okay. Uh, I've been trying to declutter around my desk. It is an eternal... I am Sisyphus rolling up my rock up the hill, and every day it rolls back down and I push it again. And then it rolls back down. Uh, if you don't know that reference, I apologize for um, that you're not very smart. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I think most people know what uh, who Sisyphus was and the myth of Sisyphus, even if they don't know the name of it. But um, and during the uh, philosophical movement of ex existen existentialism, existentialism, um, the whole idea after World War II, lots of people died in one go. Uh, we had never seen that sort of thing happen ever where, you know, Nagasaki and Hiroshima, just so many people died all in one go that a lot of people questioned why we're here. And that's where existentialism was born. It's And the point is uh, life is pointless, so we may as well die. But the ultimate existential question whether to die or not is the ultimate human question. As humans, we can choose to live or die. And that is existentialism in a, in a nutshell. Why? How did I get to this? I don't, I'm sorry. I'm getting very deep and personal there. Jesus. Anyway, Myth of Sisyphus by Albert Camus, one of the uh, original uh, theory, uh, philosophers around that time. Yeah. Um, I have a big brain. It works sometimes, and sometimes it really doesn't, okay? So I can pull that information out of my head, but, uh, you know, uh, sometimes I forget to take the clothes, hang the clothes out of the washing, and then I have to wash them again because they get stinky when they've been sitting in the washing machine. Oh, my God, shut up. Just get to the video. All right. Uh, so we are back with the most powerful women in network marketing. <laughs> If you are an anti-MLM creator or you are an anti-hopeful creator, like you're thinking about it, maybe I should be able to do it, please, please come and join it. We need everybody. Okay. We need everybody on this. Uh, there are so many MLMs and it's like a, it's like a Hydra, you know, like you cut the head off one of the leaders and then, you know, there's more heads left. So there are a lot of people who are still suckling at the MLM teat and we can do something about it in our advocacy work. And that's what we're doing here. No hate, only advocacy for victims of scams and MLMs. Anyway, one of the biggest, one of the biggest grift and scamming allegedly is Eric Worry, who has a studio and he has a yearly event called GoPro and amongst other things that he does as well. Uh, and his wife, Marina uh, is like I've said before, is a human in her own right. Uh, and she put on this event, which is the most powerful women in network marketing. It is the, I think the sixth or seventh year. And last year were like, they were bang bangers you know like they had a big lineup of people and I knew them like I knew most of the people who were uh in last year's like Lily Zaremba and Afnan Khalifa uh, Jasmine Elizabeth you know like all the genius peeps uh yeah and then this year I don't know any of them I kind of knew Priscilla was I knew who her husband was sorry more than that but yeah um it's being hosted by Marina and Eric Worry and Tom Billiel is in it as well, even though he's not a fucking woman in the network marketing. Anyway, um, so what I'm going to do, because, you know, I'm a chatty, long-winded, beep, 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 beep. Uh, I'm going to just do like maybe one one or two speeches at a time and not the whole like go for two hours. Um, so I'm sure glad that I have been having this very long introduction just to make a short video. Good work, you. He's looking at you, idiot. That's me. I'm talking to me, not you. Um, you're great.
me? Hmm, could be better. Uh, yeah, so we are going to watch a little bit of Lisa, and then I don't know who's next, but we will get there. Now, shout out to Savannah Marie, Savannah Marie. She is the beautiful Savannah Marie. <laughs> That's terrible. I'm sorry, Savannah. So Savannah's been covering it on her lives, and I apologize for my terrible internet. <laughs> Every time I'm like, oh, and there was no reason for it to buffer. It was the middle of the night, not like nothing else was happening. I, I just, I put the recording on and we'll, went back to bed. So I don't know what the guy was with the, with the Wi-Fi. Anyway, and who else has covered it? I think DC's covered it and Clown Town. I think they have covered the people. I don't know if they've done any of it, of the actual conference because I know I was talking to Val and they said, uh, have you got a list of the people? And I didn't, but I found one. So, uh, yeah, all right. So we're going to go with Lisa. If there's copyrighted music, I apologize. I'm going to get it out of the way. The chat is up. Uh, see a lot of red. Uh, if you, oh, what was I going to say? The chat is up. Oh, so it may come to a point where it changes how it looks because in the middle of these things they started having breakout groups where you could go into it and so when you go into the breakout group it actually changes the screen you're looking at so I won't have this screen the whole time and the other disadvantage of the other one is like there's a bar over the top of some of it so it's a little bit annoying but it does keep everybody anonymous at least but yeah I was so this room that I was in here the zoom room um I was thinking because it at first it only had when I first got in there, it it wasn't that big. It was like uh, I sent it to I sent it to the group chat. Let me look. Uh, yeah, and I was thinking, oh no, has it tame? But I think um, what it is is I was in the fourth chat room or the fourth Zoom. Do you know what I mean? Because I was looking like looking at the screen now, you can see that um it is fairly like there's a lot of people up there um <laughs> oh it's got all of our um, reels okay um so i'm not sure i can't remember it wasn't that much though and that it took me until looking back at it to realize i was obviously in the fourth zoom room that had access to that. That would be interesting to know how they sort of managed it. Uh, all right. So there's not much to go, and I'm just hoping this lady doesn't get cut off in the middle of it. No, she doesn't. Okay. Because we've got... Okay. Okay. Let's do it. Done with that other story. I don't hear it. Have you heard? I'm so excited. I was in the back like, okay, we should miss it, we should miss it, we should miss it. Okay, Lisa, calm down. Oh, so, so far has it been good? Have you heard some things you needed to hear today, no. right? And it's really great. It doesn't mean you didn't know it, but it's great to be reminded. And you'll hear things in this season that you heard before, but you weren't ready for it. You weren't ready to act on it. You weren't ready. You weren't done with that other story. You were still holding on to something. So I love timing. Um, I always say, listen, I I'm not a fast learner. I'm a thorough learner. So don't hesitate to give it to me again and again and again. So I'm excited where we're going to go now because... You have so much more in you than you know. And you've maximized what you know about. But what, what about the stuff you haven't discovered yet? Right? I said earlier, put on your hat like Dora the Explorer, turn on the light, and let's go. And so we're going to explore some things because the reality is there's so much in you. You know, if you literally knew the secret sauce, and when I say secret sauce, I really mean a secret sauce. I... I've traveled all over the world multiple times. I've had the pleasure of standing beside some of the best, most prolific people. Is she going to name drop for us? Let's see. She's going to name drop. She's going to name drop. Let's see. Spiritual people, guides, uh, profound, super successful, wild, just everything. I just, I, I can't believe my life. And a lot of times I look and go, wow. Either they know their secret sauce or they just got really, really lucky in their business. Um, and 
That's not how uh, general people talk. They got lucky in their business. I haven't heard it framed like uh, in their careers, maybe not business. Mm. That sounds like an MLM term. But she didn't do a name drop. I'm surprised. They don't know their secret sauce yet. But if you knew the secret sauce to becoming more courageous and more confident, that, that's the big thing. Because if you get more confident, the leap, the leaps that you will take. Watching Danita blows my mind. Because first of all, this chick is the bomb.com. Don't sleep on that one. Don't sleep on that one. What do you mean? What are we supposed to do with her? Don't sleep on her? Why? I don't understand. Don't sleep on that one. She's the bomb.com. But watching her over the last five years, as she tr she's always been amazing. She's a hypnotherapist, transformational trainer. She goes deep. You got any stuff blocked from way back when you want to get over it, call that chick. Put her on your quick dial. <laughs> like, I, I have her on quick dial. She helped me get to the altar. I was like, okay, look, I'm getting my way again. Hold on, help me. She's like, I got you. However, she was not as comfortable on stages. You know how, how many of you are good at what you do? I'm good at what I do. I'm just not too comfortable telling a lot of people about it or talking about it or shining a light on it or doing it on video. Manufactured relatability. I'm relatable because I get nervous public speaking. Just like you. We're relatable. We're relating. Or are doing it on stage or doing it in boardrooms or whatever. And so watching her become a student of really understanding um, how to create the secret sauce. Watching her courage, watching her confidence, uh, her poise. When you do that, and when you give yourself the tools to have impact every time you... Watching her confidence, uh, her poise. When you do that, and when you give yourself the tools to have impact every time you open your mouth, and not just in long conversations, but in three-minute conversations. How many of you are excited about seeing a three-minute powerful conversation? Because we all think we need length. We need time. We need space. No, you need the right setup of words. You need to understand the techniques. Um, I, for years, <laughs> uh, people have asked me, can you teach me how to speak like you? And I, I would say, no, I can't, actually. I don't know how. And I wasn't necessarily happy after, like, five years of saying that because I felt like I just wasn't in service. But I, didn't re I really didn't know how. Like, I don't know how to teach you how to do what I'm doing because a lot of it is a natural gift. And then I begin to cultivate the skill set, but more of it's a natural gift. And um, a good friend of mine would have asked me for 10 years, Jack Canfield. Um, if, it, if it's something you cultivated, it's not a natural gift, okay? I'm sorry, I just need to go back a smidge because she said something and I didn't catch it. The skill set, but more of it's a natural gift. And um, a good friend of mine would have asked me for 10 years, Jack Canfield. Lisa, just show me how to do what you do. I'm like, you're Jack Canfield, get over it. He was like, no, 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 no. But the way you do it, and then he said to me at dinner one night, he said, I'd rather have nine fingers and know I can move a room the way you do than have ten and wonder. And I said, oh, Jack. He goes, no, no, no. Don't discount what I'm saying. I can live with nine fingers. And it was one of those moments when I was trying to play it down because would, it would be uncomfortable when people shine a light on my gift. And he was like, no, no, no. He said, I think the best thing you can give us before you retire. Now, mind you, this is like 12, 13 years ago. The best thing you can give us is to show us how you do what you do. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I don't even know where to start. And I kept hearing, oh, you obviously did, you know. Like you obviously did get your start with, with where you are, with where you were. It sounds like she had a pretty good job, you know. I kept hearing it. My good friend, Vishen Lakiani, the CEO of Mind Valley, he would always say, Lisa, just show me how to do that thing you do. I'm like, no, no, no. And I feel like I name drop, name drop. I don't think this is very humble. The way she's telling it isn't humble. It's braggadocious. I began to feel like I was letting people down. Yeah. And then my good friend, JJ Virgin, who is uh, very successful, all of these eight figure, nine figure income earners are like, just, I'm, and they would say, we're good. I don't give a fuck how much money they have. It doesn't mean they're going to give you good advice. In fact, they probably can't give you very practical advice. Because you're not as rich as them. So they'll just take whatever money they can and run. But we want to be unforgettable. And I go, I, just, I, I don't know how. And then one, one November, I was praying. Every November, I spent a lot of time in prayer. It's like my month of just being on my face in prayer. And I heard spirits say, don't be lazy. 
you, you know my calendar. I'm a lot of things, but lazy ain't one. But then I realized in my quiet time, the lazy was attached to, if you don't know how to teach them how to speak more powerfully, take the time and learn. And I was convicted. Anybody ever felt that conviction that felt like you cut? I was like, I'll take the time and learn. So I took 10 days off work and I locked myself in my office and I just put white paper all around the room. And I just started writing. I started watching my YouTube videos over and over and over again. I'm crying at the video. I go, no, that's good. Like, I'm like, but I'm listening. It's quite a privileged position to be in to be able to take 10 days off just to uh, find yourself, you know? To it as a student, not critiquing anything about it, just listening to it. Like, and then I start seeing patterns. And then I start naming, just like I gave like the worst names to stuff. Like, so I just like, that's called the me, we, you. I just started naming it. And, and at the end of seven days, I knew I had something that I could hand over to people. Why did she say that? Like she was going to cry? Like there was, you know, she's crying. I just think that the emotion there was a bit disingenuous. And I just started crying. And I Why? knew like I knew like I knew in my soul that that was going to be my contribution to the planet. A, a book? I don't know. What is it? But it's so dramatic. If it's just like a freaking... So is it a course? Is it a pamphlet? Is it a PDF? Is this really, really, Lisa? This is what you were, this is your purpose in life to do this? Really? Yeah, that. Uh, I think you need to go and have a conversation with God if this is your purpose. Uh, imagine what she could do. And she's stuck in network marketing coaching it's a uh, it's icky let's keep going and everything else i've done was leading to this season i literally you guys everything that i've done has led to this season to bring this contribution to you and so i'm just i'm super excited because then i watched i watched this jack ham build and vision and, and jj virgin everyone came into the class and they all sat front row as students and like help us be better and so when you know the secret sauce then you realize that what you can do and what you understand exactly can make you a magnet and a magnet to attracting more people. You attract more people, you attract more team, you attract more money, you attract more joy. I kept attracting people and money and opportunities in spite of my lack of CEO skills. Like my speaking kept saving what I didn't know. Anybody know about that? Like your personality just keeps finding a way for you. My speaking was so strong that I would mess everything up in the back end, but I had this floodgate coming at me every time I opened my mouth. And, I, and honestly, I, I'm the kid who struggled in school. I'm the kid who got a fail in English and got a D minus in speech. So I wasn't ever the brightest cookie in the cookie jar. <laughs> Sometimes if I was the only cookie in the cookie jar. But I'm okay with that because I found ways to nurture my gifts and what I do well. And so... But what is that, Lisa? What are you saying you do well? The question is, should you adopt and take on this new superpower? How will you use it? What because superpower? the worst thing you can do is get a superpower, get a gift, get a, get a bonus, get a skill set, and sit on it. Because your confidence won't let you shine. The worst thing for you is when people do that. Because that means they have a nest egg and they're not all in with their MLM. And if it's not their actual products... Oh my god, where did my brain go again? I gotta rewind it. The question is, should you adopt and take on this new superpower? How will you use it? Because the worst thing you can do is get a superpower, get a gift, get a get a bonus, get a skill set, and sit on it. Because your confidence won't let you show me. So I don't turn Should you adopt and take on this new superpower, superpower, how will you use it? Because the worst thing you can do is get a superpower, get a gift, get a, get a bonus, get a skill set, and sit on it. Oh, yeah, because um, you want people to, to not be financially secure, so then they keep investing into the MLM. 
that's why you don't want them to have a savings account. But then a whole heap of MLMs were claiming last year that uh, it's 40... Percent. What was I going to say? Forty percent. Far out. What? Like I am. I'm serious. My brain is. That just fell right out of my brain again. Try it one last time. How will you use it? Because the worst thing you can do is get a superpower, get a gift, get a get a bonus, get a skill set, and sit on it. Because your confidence won't let you shine. Oh, I remember now. Um, they were going on about how that most people or couldn't survive a $400 emergency, okay? So you want them to be broke so they're dependent on the MLM. So I don't turn this on to everyone or give this to everyone. You have to make a commitment that I'm going to use this to do more good in the world. I'm going to use this to shine more light on others. I'm going to use this to... Grow a dream, my dream, and more importantly, somebody else's dream. I'm going to use it. You don't care about somebody else's success, like. So are you down to make a commitment about the superpower? Like, because everyone isn't worthy of the superpowers. Like, everyone won't be a good steward of them. And I learned that I have to start making this request up front. Use your powers for good. When my father, when I was in second grade, we had a pop quiz. And I disagreed with a pop quiz. And so I began to walk across the, across the campus, the little playground, saying out loud, we should not have a quiz. No pop quizzes. And I looked back and they were like five kids behind me. No pop quizzes. We should not have pop quizzes. 20 kids behind me. No pop quizzes. By the time I got to the gate, no, we should not have a pop quiz. Looked back and there were like 100 kids behind me. And we walked outside the school ground, which we weren't supposed to. And got in a lot of trouble. And then I got on the outside of the gate and I was like, no more pop quizzes. They were like, no more pop quizzes. What do we do now, Lisa? I was like, I don't know. Like Forrest Gump. Well, no, let's just go back inside. That day, my principal called my father and said, watch out for her because she's powerful. And from that day forward, my father used to always say, baby girl, promise me you will use your powers for good. And so who you are, you've always been. She's just coming out more and more. He's always been that. You're not, you're not becoming someone anew. You're becoming more of you, right? Well, isn't it a little bit ironic that she's talking about how her father said, oh, make sure you, uh, you know, do well with your power. And what's Lisa doing with her power? She's an MLM coach. And it might be that she thinks that she is just a entrepreneurial coach or somebody who coaches business women but this event is called the most powerful women in network marketing so this is aimed at network marketers and it is a funnel for a program that lisa and marina are actually putting out and it's a coaching type situation which people have to pay money for a lot of money and they're paying it to these women who are already well off they don't need it you know uh it's the ongoing grift and then taking this money from other women who are struggling. The industry that they are in has a 99.7% value rate and the coaches are promising to coach you to success when it is statistically almost impossible for you to succeed. And they know that and that's why they're not very good people. So Lisa could be doing amazing things with her time, with her charisma. Okay, she's kind of funny. She seems like a nice person. But it's all, this is all to get people in MLMs to give them more money. When MLM distributors are the most exploited part of the entire system, you know. Uh, Yeah, so I, I wouldn't be proud of her if she was my daughter. I would be like, what are you doing? This is not okay. And that's what I'm saying. It's not okay. And so, question, would you use your newfound powers to grow your dream? Would you use your newfound powers to serve more people? Would you use your newfound power to generate more income? 
You don't want to have this power and then stay broke. You don't want to have this power and then just cap out of seven figures. You don't want to have this power and cap out where you are. You Why not? You've already done that. That's what the opportunity is for. Spread the good news. Shake up, shake the trees. Don't be so afraid of being liked that you forget to be you. Give yourself the freedom of being chosen and unchosen. When you have the freedom of being unchosen, when unchosen doesn't shake you, then you'll live in your truth. Hello, hello, hello. Yes or yes? I was like, ooh, she just got deep. Like, be willing. Be willing to speak even when your voice shakes. Say it even while your knees are knocking. Say it anyway. Don't wait to get it perfect to say it. Say it while your knees are knocking. And announce, my knees are knocking. But I'm going to say it what? Anyway. Like, that's what you do when you have the superpower. You got to use it in all climates. Use it when you're unpopular. When the George Floyd things happened, and for a moment I was quiet. And I was quiet because I know the power of my voice. And for a very real moment, I wasn't a change agent. I wasn't a transformational leader. I was a black mama. That's who I am. And my 27-year-old son at that time was driving 20 hours across country to his new home with his new wife. And he had to drive during the day. He had to let his white best friend drive so that he wouldn't get pulled over. I had no space for 20 hours to be a change agent. I said, just let my son land safely in Washington. And I got ridiculed for saying I got to hold my space. I was okay with that. I'm, I'm okay not being popular with everyone. People thought I should be mad and angry, and I, and I was mad and angry, but I knew that my words land on hearts, and my words shape decisions, so I would not speak until I can process my anger to speak responsibly for how it was going to land. Because I can say anything. I can say anything, but everything I say must leave your dignity intact as a receiver. And until I figure that out, stay quiet. So that's how you become responsible with it. Not easy. I'm a mama first, right? But it's the thing that you do when you know your power. Know your power and don't give it up to anybody or anything. Just grow it. Know your power and grow your power. And then use your power for good. What if someone takes the power away uh, by recruiting and gaslighting them into a failing system? I think it'd be very popular, actually. And then multiply yourself and multiply your intention as much as possible. See... One of the things that this is about is becoming a master crafter. Say master crafter. Type in chat master crafter because I'm going to show you how. I'm just going to touch it. I'm going to sprinkle it on in these next couple of days. But I'm going to show you how to use words as an art, to understand words as a science, that the lexicon is your playground. But most of you, most of you, I'm going to put this right here so I can have you guys do it. Most of you are like a keyboard. Do your hands like this. It's like a keyboard. So you're playing on the keyboard of language. Everyone do it. Y'all see, hold on, guys. You're really in the room. Yes, thank you. Come on. There, we'll play with me. Come on. You're at the party. Alfredo, play with me. There you go. Thank you, baby. So you're on. No, really. Keep Robert. doing it. Keep doing it. That's not a, no, not thumbs. All right. Robert. So you're on language. And this is how you're speaking right now. This is how most people speak. Seven and What the fuck did I just miss? Because that's not making sense to me. See, one of the things that this is about is becoming a master crafter. Say master crafter. Type in chat, master crafter, because I'm going to show you how. I'm just going to touch it. I'm going to sprinkle it on in these next couple of days. But I'm going to show you how to use words as an art, to understand words as a science. Oh, how interesting. I think that's also called manipulation. That the lexicon is your playground. But most of you, most of you, I'm going to put this right here so I can have you guys do it. All of them. I'm going to use the word lexicon now. <laughs> Most of you are like a keyboard. Do your hands like this. It's like a keyboard. So you're playing on the keyboard of language. Everyone do it. You'll see. Hold on. Guys, you're really in the room. Yes, thank you. Come on. There, we'll play with me. Come on. You're at the party. Alfredo, play with me. There you go. Thank you, baby. So you're on. No, really. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. That's not a, No, not thumbs. All right. So you're on language. And this is how you're speaking right now. This is how most people speak. Seven and eight figure and nine figure income earners are speaking here a lot too. And here's what you re must recognize is that language is like a whole piano. Uh, I'm sure I'm glad I rewound, rewound the uh, video just to see that. Um, what? What are we doing? How is this playing? What? How is this giving us success in our business? What? That was so weird. And culty. Like, do you know who else has little moves they do with their hands? Do, 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 do. 
Mm. Uh, that was weird. And it's priming. It's like, you know, come along with me. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's just getting a little bit culty in here. Anyone got some flavor aid? I hear it's what everybody drinks. And there's all this stuff over here that you're not using because you can make millions right here. But boy, when you go out here and you become Alicia Keys and John Legend and Elton John on the piano of language, you're unstoppable. <laughs> unstoppable. Yeah, if you were as talented as them, maybe, but like, friggin' hell, you can't get there just by chance. And so, I'm gonna start the process with you and show you how anyone can do it, because you have it in you. It's not just me. You have it in you. Every time I say you have it, you got it in you, you say I got it in me. You got it in you. You got it in you. You got it in you. Just, we're gonna keep saying that because we wanna tell our, right now I'm telling your head, but before it's over, your cells will remember. And you want DNA level learning. I don't want to learn in my mind. I want to learn in my cells. I want cellular learning. And then ultimately, I want cellular learning. Right? That I'm just it. When I sweat, what I know comes from my pores. <laughs> so it's to learn how, when you learn how to become a master crafter of language and its impacts, your cape powers begin. That's, and, and mind you, when you look at the person who wins any campaign, they're the person that's most eloquent, the person that's most convincing, the person that's most poised, the person that's most charming, the person that's most charismatic, and the person that's most moving. Right or wrong, good or bad, whatever their integrity is, they just got it because they, they're all of those things. Doesn't necessarily have to mean they're the perfect person for the job. It just means that their cape powers were on. So when you look at it, your superpower is normally right under your nose. It's right. So when you look at it, your superpower is normally right under your nose. It's right under your nose. And, and it normally is underused and underdeveloped. <laughs> right under your nose. And we point at all these other things. The climate isn't right. The people aren't right. I don't have enough opportunity. It's because of my nationality. It's because of where I live. And while those things may be factors, they don't have the right to take away your, birth power, your birthright. They do not have that opportunity. Let me get out your um, and take a picture. Totally agree. And so understanding that there are many things that you can build to make sure you are monumentally successful. But the first thing you better master is your story. Whoever has the best story is the one that's remembered. And I am remembered way more by my stories than my name. People will say, you're the lady, you're the $11.42 lady. You're the winners never quit lady, right? But they would just name me after whatever story they heard. Right, you're the Tonka truck lady. You're the Tonka truck lady, okay. Right? And that's fine. Just be remembered when you recognize your story is your tool, but your mastered story becomes your superpower. You all have a story, and you're all telling the story, but when you master the story, you now are playing with your superpower. And you attach that to a good business plan. You attach that to consistency. You attach that, Darlene, Crystal, you attach that to um, action, and then things happen. The time, it's take, the time it will take you to, to master your story... I started, with, I started with Marina in November last year. And we had three sessions. And in three sessions, she went up three to four notches as a speaker. Okay, so what's on the notch? What does that mean? Uh, because, I mean, how do you qualify each notch? Did she improve her pacing, her confidence, what she's saying? So, in other words, uh, you started off in a... Um, like a business relationship with Marina and she hired you, obviously, which would be nice to know uh, because, you know, just for tr the sake of transparency, but uh, not like an mlm -er to uh, not be transparent. Yeah, so it's interesting that this is where this is developed now because it seems like it's going to be something that makes both of these women a lot of money and I think that's the point. So we think it's hard, we think it's long, it's not, it just needs to be intentional. I love this statement, there is no greater agony than bearing an untold story inside of you. Your job, your job is to tell your story. Okay, so 
I'm filming this a second time around because my first time around was terrible. I was like so snoozy and it was the afternoon. It wasn't even night time. Yeah. So, um, I don't think Maya Angelou would be real happy about pyramid schemes, Lisa, you know, and, uh, there's some stories that MLMers have told that I wish they had a kept inside of them because not everything is for everyone. We don't have to share everything to have relationships online. Uh, it's terrible what these people have to do or feel they have to do to be successful in the MLM. And, you know, we often hear from people once they are out how they wish they hadn't shared so much because, you know, the internet is forever. Uh, yeah, so some, there's about to be a big change. Let's see how what you think of it because I, I was very confused. I love my life. I am so grateful. Who is this? What the hell? And did you see Lisa? Like, it was so bizarre. Watch her. I'm just going to, like, I'm just going to mute it for a second just so that I can, I can watch her. Like, look at her. And she's walking slowly backwards. And then this woman comes out. Like, she's, like, like she's a turtle. She's got her head all the way out. She's got her best wedge heels on. And the way, even her, my lord, my lord, it sounds like Dracula. I, I was like, and having already been tired, I was like, where did Lisa just go? She didn't even say anything. She just said, you need to tell your story. And then all of a sudden there's this other person there going, I love my life. I'm like, what? <laughs> it hurt my head. And it's hurting my head again trying to explain it. Go away. Go away. Anyway, I'll keep going. <laughs> oh, hang on. I need to put the... Turn the mute off. All right, we'll go back another 10 seconds. This is so weird. I love my life. I am so grateful that each and every morning I get to wake up and throw caution to the wind and live and create. Same, TBH. My best life ever. And that includes being a loving mother, a certified wellness consultant. Uh, who certified it? Who's this? Who, who gave you the certification? A wellness consultant. Okay, so are you with Youth Sciences, Arbonne, It Works, Modair? Mm. A civil rights warrior. Yeah. Um, I hope you're not in an MLM because you're taking advantage of people. You're infringing on people's civil rights when you scam them as an MLM distributor, but you know, I don't really know who this person is because no one introduced them. I think Lisa said something about Danica, but I, I don't sleep, don't sleep on her. Why? You know, that, that, that bit, that bit. And most recently the executive director of a fast growing nonprofit. Yeah. What's that nonprofit for? Look at that smug fucking face, but okay. It's a. Uh, it's quite easy to open a nonprofit um, and call yourself the executive director. It doesn't mean that it's successful, you know. But what makes my heart sing are the testimonies from those I've assisted in reclaiming their health. That's why I have watched this before, and I'm. St this is my real face. Obviously, what 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 the fuck else could my face be? You know what I mean. Um, I 
I thought that made me nervous when she. It was too much. It's, mm, I don't like it. I don't know why. It just feels like too much. And this is network marketing. It's not that serious, Bob. And healing through breath work. Um, looking at your clenched fists, perhaps you'd like to try some of that uh, breath work. Right now, because you're, I can see the veins on your veins, you know, in your hands, because you just look like she's so clenched. Jeez. My revelation came in the summer of 96. Earlier that year, I'd been diagnosed with a uterine fibroid the size of a swollen grapefruit. It reversed my cycle. 21 days on, seven days off. Man, I missed that before. Um, you know how before I was saying, like, people tell their stories and they can't take it back and they overshare? You could just say you had a tumor. Tumor. It doesn't sound, I don't know, like, I don't want to police her mood. But it, it just sounds so intense, you know? 21, one, seven, off. It disfigured my body to the point where I could no longer stand up straight. I could no longer walk or stand by myself. I had been reduced to a slivering, legless creature. Uh, is that a little bit ableist? A slithering creature. You've been, re like, yeah, I don't like that. I don't think that's okay. Um, people who don't control their legs or can't control their legs due to whatever are not slithering creatures you know like that's the she's not saying it but that's what could be taken away from it god i was alone i was afraid and i was so ashamed Why? I was ashamed because I knew better. What? Ashamed because I had always been the one who was the enlightened one. Ashamed because this was not supposed to happen to me. Mom, I ashamed that it wasn't supposed to happen to you? I can understand anger that it's not supposed to happen to you but I wouldn't be embarrassed if it wasn't you know like that's ashamed that it wasn't supposed maybe at the hubris of thinking that you're you'd never it had never happened to you that's all I can think of like maybe like you thought this will never happen to me so maybe that's <laughs> this is look this is terrible storytelling I'm sorry it's not good it, it, like, like I always say to my students, like, don't start at a hundred, okay? If you, because we play this, this drama game, I think I made it up, okay? I think I made it up. And we call it by Karen, all right? And in, you get a scene where someone has to be a Karen and you get a setting and you have to deal with the Karen and the last words you say are in the scene to get rid of, you know, to finish the scene is you got to say, bye, Karen, you know. And you get rid of her. Anyway, the kids all know what a Karen is, right? And I have to really always tell them, you know, it's it, you need to be a little bit more nuanced because you can't go on there 100 miles an hour as your top, top Karen, okay? you got to build to the top Karen because if you already start out at the top, you've got nowhere else to go, you know? So then the, the performance isn't as good and you can't get as much depth in that character. 
it's the same here. Like she just started out so fucking high intensity that it just it all feels off kilter and and I feel like um we're getting in trouble for something. I don't know. Like it's not a pleasant thing to listen to at the moment. My recovery started with one slow, deep belly breath. Take one now, please. And another. And another. Except we don't need to hear them either. Until one day I looked up and it had become a practice. I added meditation, acupuncture. Are you kidding me? This speaker, her voice is soothing? No. I am concerned. It's put me on, like I'm on the edge of my seat because I, I feel uneasy. And chiropractic care. Oh, good. Which I still... It's uh, it's the natural, natural medication uh, trifecta. <laughs> will do to this day. Great. Good to you. Reconnecting. With the power of my breath, allowed me to redefine what loving myself feels and looks like. It allowed me to rescue myself and save me one breath at a time. Really? Not two breaths at a time? Like, obviously. Jesus. Now, I've done yoga teacher training, okay? So I know about breath. I know the importance of breath. Okay? Oh, that's her name, Dawina. Um, yeah. These people are fools. I just, I can't see what they're seeing in this speaker. Uh, yeah, breath is important. I totally agree. But uh, I don't know that breath is going to help you with whatever your tumour that you said it allowed me to learn how to love myself again how how one breath at a time at a time yep good, good. one yep. breath mm -hmm. at a time yep good say it with me one uh, breath say. at a time my name is Duana Kyles I'm a speaker, advocate, coach, and you've got it in you. Wow. I love my life. I am powerful. That's terrible. think that that speaker was supposed to be like here this is how you tell your story um it was completely great like it was completely unhinged it was so extreme and not very relatable to be honest and I think that if she was going to have that that center point of the speech being one breath at a time I think that she needed to probably lead with that okay everybody take a deep breath with me you know and then say and on that exhale think about where you're you know because I've done meditation like scripts and things like that like okay picture your breath like a golden thread coming out of your mouth there's actually a um meditation the golden thread meditation um yeah like I don't think that was a good example of anything. It was, I it was a terrible speech. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, it felt really disingenuous as well. So, uh, it is what it is. Mm. Anyway, um, that's going to be it for me now. In my second, this is my second wrap up because why? I snooze too hard. Uh, yeah. Um, Going to keep on doing little bits and bobs of the uh, most powerful women in network marketing. 
2023. Uh, but I've also got roasting time on Sunday with my besties, the clown town. Whoop, whoop. What's the sound? That's the sound of the clown town. Whoop, whoop. Look at this cup. I've had this cup for a very long night no, for a couple of years. I have to send it to Gus and Val, don't I? It is so cool. It's just like a stationary cup. Yeah. Anyway, we are roasting. We've got a Monet roast. Uh, Christina Smallwood and Salvage Cell Christopani. Uh, we are roasting them on Sunday. Can't wait. Uh, <laughs> uh, privileged white women. Privileged white women. Oh, the last bastion of people who are being oppressed is privileged white women. And Christians. Christians are being oppressed everywhere. Did you not know? Did you not know? Hmm. Anyway, um, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next show. Goodbye. One of the dogs is licking my ankle. I like it. Hmm.